Uh, yeah, guys, you're tuned live to uh, No Borders Radio. .co.uk and Scottish Sovereigns on the land .ning.com. Guys, I think you would agree with me. That was an absolutely fantastic first show uh, from Teresa. Um, well done, Teresa. Uh, very p- proud of you, uh, if that's the right word to say. You, you know what I'm thinking. Uh, cracking first show, uh, guys. Uh, Teresa will be back with us every Monday, 79, where uh, she can, obviously. Uh, she is busy, as she says, helping different people out when she can, where she can. Uh, as we all uh, do, but um, uh, she will be with us from 79, uh, uh, and uh, we look forward to our, our uh, further shows, absolutely spot on tonight, uh, actually I had to nip out in between <coughs> uh, the broadcast tonight, and I sent uh, uh, Teresa a little message saying, are you okay to continue speaking for about another 30 minutes or so, till I get back and answer the receiver's eye, any problem? Um, I should have remembered, you know, uh, I should have remembered, Teresa can talk. <laughs> anyway, guys, how you all doing? It's uh, it's this night, it's uh, Monday, how you's doing? I'm going to give you a wee shout out in the chat box, let me know if you can, uh, if you can hear me. Okay, how my sound is tonight. Uh, I'm going to see if I can uh, do anything with my microphone, actually. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, should be kind of sitting just about fine now. Uh, okay, guys, uh, too bad, how you doing? Uh, nice to see you back on the site, mate. Uh, Alan of the Calderwoods, how you doing, Alan? Andy, good old Andy there, how you doing, buddy? Uh, ben, there, Ben. Listen, guys, uh, uh, how you doing, Duck? Um, uh, I was going to say, Ben there, uh, guys, if you click to the, the right of the chat box, um, No Borders Radio, I think uh, Ben should be congratulated. Uh, with a fantastic job that he's done there on the No Borders radio site, um, uh, where you can actually uh, get to hear the radio. You don't actually have to be a member of uh, Scots Sovereigns or whatever to be listening to this uh, uh, station, um, you know, so we can direct people to that as well. Uh, and what he's done is he's picked out quite a few stories, and he's put a lot of time and effort in there, and it's looking absolutely fantastic, Ben, and well done, mate. Congratulations. Uh, absolute credit to uh, the team that we are, you know, the uh, the team, and that includes us all guys, you guys in the chat box as well, we are the team, we are the team, we're getting things done, we're starting to work cohesively, we're starting to get the things together, we're starting to get our ideas, our thoughts, our concepts, uh, our, uh, our concepts, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're getting all these things together. Um, if you've got any stories, guys, uh, of the same kind of ilk that's on noborders.radio.co.uk, uh, and you want to uh, get them onto that, you think that it's justified that uh, the stories that, that you're coming across should be on that, um, then certainly if you've got my Skype or Ben's Skype or any of the hosts, uh, Skype, uh, pass it to them and we'll eventually it'll filter through to whoever uh, needs to it. And uh, Ben is the uh, kind of main admin on the No Borders uh, side of things there, uh, but he can certainly get it up. I can get it uh, placed on there as well. But uh, as Ben's kind of baby, he's dealing with that. The new it's a lot of my time to deal with this side of it, and Ben's taking care of that side of it. So together we're all working together, and it's actually brilliant cracking to see us. Uh, actually starting to uh, find a, a direction in which uh, we are prepared to travel uh, in order to uh, reach the objectives that we have to reach collectively for the people, uh, not only of Scotland, uh, the UK, uh, but globally. I mean, you know, we're not saying we're going to fix the problems, but we're going to have a damn good try uh, at doing that very thing is what we're going to do. Um, and it takes everybody's effort and I appreciate everybody's effort uh, what they do uh, with the site Um, all the admin of the site we've got about seven, eight, nine admins uh, they all look after the site um, in their own uh, ways Uh, and at the end of the day we're working together, we're pulling together as a team and we're getting things done, we're starting to kick butt a wee bit and I think that can only be a a good thing Um, so Yep, keep pulling together, guys. Anyhow, I'm going to jump on now and uh, continue with the name shout. Kath, how you doing, Kath? Of course, uh, Kath makes the best soup in the sobs, apparently. <laughs> yeah, she's not tried my tomato soup yet. I'm going to make some uh, tomato soup, Kath. Uh, just for you, a bowl, just for you. Nobody else is getting it. The, the greedy guys, uh, they took it. Uh, Duck Dodgers, how you doing, buddy? Uh, good to see you back on the site, long time. 
uh, maybe a month or two since I think I last saw you. But good to see you back on, mate. Uh, Donald, away down there in, uh, I think is it Dumfries, uh, or, or down the parts. Um, uh, nice to see you, buddy. I uh, hope you're keeping well. Ian alone, we need to get a wee chat, read your recent uh, thing there with the uh, the MMS. Uh, but interesting to get a wee chat with you. Um, Freeborn Bill, how you doing Freeborn? Hope you're keeping well, buddy. And, uh, uh, and you're still into the Jaffa Cakes there. Uh, Gordy, how you doing Gordy? Uh, nice to see you the other week, buddy. Um, uh, by the way, we've got uh, a shout for, uh, uh, we've got uh, one uh, guy that I know. Uh, who's looking for uh, one of those said baths, uh, a, 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 one of the toilet pan things, uh, a, a sink and a pedestal, if we could actually uh, supply that, that would be grand. Um, so I'll have a wee chat with uh, probably uh, Irish Colin uh, over the next uh, few days and see if we can get that organised. Um, Graham, how you doing Graham? Uh, not seeing you in chat very much buddy, but nice to see you on the chat. Uh, Andy, how you doing Andy? Um, I hope you're uh, keeping off the old uh, ginger beer tonight. Gee, your heartburn, mate. Uh, Jake, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Jock, that's, uh, that's your Jock for doing there. Uh, John Gibson, how you doing? Listen, I'm going to have to batter through these. <laughs> uh, just Jeff, again, nice to see you back on the site, mate. Um, uh, Mike Ryan, again, nice to see you on the site again, buddy. Nimble Horse, yes, we'll get in touch and we'll get that other thing sorted out. Uh, maybe no be tonight, mate, but we'll get it sorted out. Uh, Reedy, how you doing, Reedy? Uh, Reclaw, nice to see you on Clint. Um, of course, uh, Nala's older sibling, uh, or more mature sibling. Rab doesn't like it when I, when I call him older. How you doing, Rab? Um, Ronnie, how you doing, Ronnie? Uh, nice to see you still um, coming on and being active and stuff, mate. We've not seen you for a, a wee while. Nice to uh, catch up. Uh, Solar Eyes Bry, how you doing, that man? Um, I still need to get back to you regarding that stuff uh, that you sent me there. Um, just that I'm uh, absolutely clear on usage. Uh, Starlight Girl, how you doing? Uh, uh, Sting, uh, Tam Beneficiary, how you doing, Tam? Um, Keith, Teresa Sterling, and uh, William Valance. How you all doing, folks? Well, I tell you, uh, oh. You know, sometimes you get the, the kind of days, folks, where you just kind of get annoyed at people, you know. Um, I, I kind of had one of the uh, days where uh, people were just, not annoying me, but, you know, I, I just felt like I, I was I was dismayed, I think is the better word to use, not annoyed, dismayed at uh, humanity. I was dismayed at the lack of uh, empathy with people and situations. I was dismayed with the lack of uh, comprehension of construct. I was dismayed with uh, uh, the lack of um, uh, just sheer bloody common sense at times, you know. And uh, I didn't have that many conversations with, with too many people today because I thought maybe best to keep my way uh, self clear of uh, these people. Um, because these people don't see it for the same framework that, that you and I see it from. And then I had to check myself, I had to I had to uh I had to pull myself back and realise uh, myself that uh, you know, only ten years ago or so uh, I was like that myself. I was pretty much in dreamland, I was pretty much uh, uh you know uh, a captive of the uh, the the media outlets that we have, um, and then uh, I fell for it big time, just like uh, a lot of people did and does. Uh, so you know uh, the the thing that disturbed me was was last night this morning, uh, which kind of the Barclays Bank. I don't know. Uh, by the way, I'm going to be bringing on Tammy Pepperman, another host here in No Borders Radio. Uh, very interesting lady. Um, Great to talk to. It's been actually been a while since uh, herself and myself chatted. Um, but what this made me uh, last night was uh, the Barclays Bank thing, where uh, the Barclays people are going to uh, stop the, the the routine of how they they send money into Somalia. Uh, you might hear my dog barking in the background. I might need to go to a song in a wee second and see what's happening. Um, 
they're going to be stopping the transference of money uh, going into Somalia. And and from what the the news outlets that I was looking at last night, you know, again we've got to bear in mind that some of these uh, or all of these news outlets, you know, they're, they're tilted in some shape or form. Uh, they've got that spin on it, um, the propaganda side um, delivered uh, to the people so that they can derive some form of uh, semblance of a, an idea that the, uh, the construct is trying to put across to them. Um, they're suggesting that millions of people could starve uh, in Somalia, you know. Barclays Bank. I'm going to, uh, I'll put a song on just now and uh, I'll come right back with our guest for this evening. Yeah guys, you're back uh, at nobordersradio.co.uk and scottysovereignsintheland.ning.com We've lost Tammy Pepperman uh, for some reason guys um, I've sent her a couple of messages there but for some reason she's appeared offline um, maybe having internet troubles or something like that uh, she sent me a message at um, uh, 2106 uh, and I spotted it there uh, I've tried to call her in so I don't know what's happening um, if she uh, if she gets back online we'll certainly get her in uh, want to speak to uh, uh, Tammy uh, very interesting lady as I said, um, and if not tonight, then uh, we'll rearrange that one. That's a definite. Uh, okay, so that's that's that kind of plan out the window. So uh, we're on to plan B. Is there a plan B? Is there a plan B? Um, we'll just need to be a plan B. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, uh, what Teresa was saying, uh, I would like to highlight uh, regarding, uh, you know. Uh, the presentation at courts. Uh, I'm no discussing whether you should or whether you should not uh, turn up in a suit. Um, that's that's your choice, you know. Uh, but as far as uh, the passive observance is concerned, I think that's an absolute uh, spot on thing that we should be doing. Uh, um, so that we're not causing any. Uh, you know, controversy uh, or otherwise uh, in these places. Uh, so we've also looked at other ways to to try and uh, you know ease that that uh, element, if you like, um, out of play if we can, um, and that requires uh, the cooperation of all um, the dedicated uh, courtroom team uh, members. Uh, you know, the, the these are all working together with the same uh, consent and agreement uh, and, and uh, binding contract between yourselves that you're going to uh, sit stum and uh, uh, be a passive observer. Um, I know uh, for, for what I saw, uh, I wasn't allowed uh, to get in the other room there. Uh, this man told me. Uh, I came down from being upstairs at Kilmarnock Court uh, I was walking towards the uh, the court uh, door, uh, and a, a guy can approach me and says, "You can't get in." At which point, I didn't bother saying. I just said, uh, "Fair play," and I turned about and walked away out the door. Because um, there's no point in me banging on that guy's neck, you know. Uh, but you've got to let me in. It's a public court. Da 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 da. You know, as a public court, as a it's a, a registered trading corporation. Um, I don't think there's really much public about it, to be quite honest with you. Um, the same when we say that, you know, uh, these uh, these guys uh, who wear the yellow shiny jackets, um, you know, uh, they work for us. Uh, I would suggest that they don't actually work for us. Um, they're there to uh, uh, maintain uh, and uh, keep in place the construct of the law system that we have here in Scotland at the moment um, which is an alien construct um, as we know uh, whereby the original construct of Scotland was something known as Breton Law uh, uh, that being uh, you know if a community of people uh, had a concern 
um, uh, and even uh, uh, at some point uh, at times uh, they would set about doing what there was called a hue and cry uh, and I don't just necessarily mean the, uh, uh, the pop group of the 80s hue and cry um, the hue and cry uh, was a form of uh, um, alarm bells if you like uh, is where uh, the people of the community would raise the alarm say uh, someone has uh, stolen some th- something or someone has injured someone um, and, and the locals thought that that was just not on they would raise the hue and cry and they would summon eventually when they, they've caught the guy because uh, there was no uh, uh, constables at, at this point in time um, it was the community that policed the community uh, guys, listen, I'm just going to go to a wee song there. We've got uh, Tammy uh, coming back to us. Just give me a wee second. Uh, folks, uh, you're tuned to nobordersradio.co.uk and uh, scottishsovereignsintheland.ning.com. Uh, very pleased to introduce uh, our fellow host, Tammy Pepperman. How are you doing, Tammy? Really well. How are you? Uh, we're we're grand. I just need to alter your uh, sound levels away there. So I tell you, Tammy, uh, folks, Tammy uh, uh, hosts with us uh, on a 9 p.m. GMT on a Saturday night, um, and she's just about to go, uh, I believe, live as well with us because uh, what she's been doing is putting uh, a lot of work into the the podcast and stuff that she's been making for us and sending to us. Uh, and she's just about, I think, ready to go uh, kind of live. I'm sure. I don't know. Uh, we'll maybe find that out. But um, Tammy, if you can, if you can give yourself a wee introduction to the Monday Night Squad, uh, I can alter your your sound levels here at the same time. Well, um, we have, of course, uh, our podcast on No Borders. Um, We've also been on These Changing Times, which is a sister station, and also uh, Leaving the Farm. Now we're on Thursday nights, which is the reason I'm able to go over to No Borders and be live, because before uh, being on Saturdays, it was like back to back to back, and it just was impossible. Um, But hopefully soon we'll be over on No Borders live on Saturdays as well. So it'll be very, very uh, fun for me because this is what we do. This is uh, this is exactly what we do and the reason we do it is to get the message out. Tommy, how's things in your uh, your part of the land? Before we begin to start discussing what we're going to discuss tonight, how, how is the general thing, the feeling uh, on the ground? People, the, the general people, the, the, the normal guys and women that walk about the streets, how's How's the atmosphere? How's the what's the energy like? Well, they're they're finding now a lessening of the oppression upon them, and it, it has completely shifted over here. Anyway, um, for now, until we push, and we're also seeing this in the UK as well. Now, I haven't seen it in Scotland. Um, however, it's coming um, here. You know, the the prior to. Uh, what we did in the United States court, uh, taking over the United States district courts and the superior courts and everything, they were condemned in this case. And what had happened is we offered them a business deal. We said, hey, look, you have been human trafficking. If you still want to make money, you're going to have to go over to the public law and hold each other accountable. You're going to have to cannibalize each other. I'm really sorry, but there is no going to be no more human trafficking. And that's what we're seeing now. Um, Prior to this, since the 14th Amendment that Abraham Lincoln signed in, you know, into the um, United States Constitution. And before I go on, I I need to say that everybody across the globe, every human being, is the United States. In the 1600s, Congress came in, which is the Senate and the House of Representatives, and they took over all of the states by secession. To secede something means take over the estate. It doesn't mean you're going away from anything. And so, um, you know, uh, if a Scottish person was over here and they took over that last name, that took over that whole lineage. And they did that by letters patent, claiming that we were all dead or lost at sea. Now, what had happened in the 14th Amendment is Lincoln came in and he made sure that everybody was dead by calling them naturalized, born or naturalized. And at that point, people, human beings were considered civilly dead. 
And that's a whole different status as a natural person. Well, what happened this year is we held them accountable, and we, we had to eventually declare the fiction dead, which is banks, bankers, and those are judges and attorneys, and I'll go into that uh, shortly. Sure. And sure. that is what we're seeing now. There, <laughs> the, the most amazing thing has been happening here. Agents, agents. That that word is something very important according to the 1929 Geneva Convention. Agents weren't held as prisoners of war, just as much as attorneys, um, bankers, banks, which are judges, etc. And so they could not be deemed a natural person. And this is under the uh, the banking laws in this country. And before I go on, those laws apply across the globe, Scotland, UK, um, Australia, everything else, because in 1941, President Roosevelt and Churchill entered into agreement to give Congress global governance. They are the new world order. Well, or what we're seeing now is all these attorneys and judges and agents, they're being charged by the bank to offset congressional bankruptcy. That could not happen before since the 14th Amendment because only the human being, the natural person, was considered the surety. Now that is completely changed. And that's the relief everybody's feeling. They're they're feeling like they can breathe now. It's because they're no longer the dead thing. They're no longer that natural person. The attorney, the banker, the judge, the bank, all of those things are the natural person. And we're seeing this occurring, I mean, quickly. It's very swift. Um, the other day, an attorney in Missouri was actually charged with bank robbery. And on top of that, he was first entered into the foundling hospital when the state patrol or highway patrol shot him in both legs, injuring him. To injure means being brought into law. And so first he was found by the foundling hospital, so he was born again, just like everybody else is born here. And then, uh, of course, he's been charged by the bank. On top of that, the update says that he's charged with serial bank robbery. And it's been the most amazing thing to see. There's a judge in Utah now being charged with drug, uh, by the Drug Enforcement Agency. That, they, they made up a story against that one and said that judge was mailing class three narcotics through the mail. Mm -hmm. Nobody is that stupid. Absolutely nobody is that stupid. And, um, you know, whatever they need to do to cannibalize each other, I'm all for it. It doesn't bother me one bit. I have no compassion, no empathy whatsoever for these fictional creations that have been holding humanity hostage for so many years to offset congressional bankruptcy. And now we're seeing a total different world now. Yeah. Did you catch the thing uh, yesterday, Tammy? Uh, or it would have been uh, today, this morning for you. Um, the Barclays Bank is going to be stopping the transference of money flow through into Somalia, uh, and this is going to affect millions. They reckon there's going to be millions starving. Absolutely, and we need to jump in there because what has happened is Congress has made um, such an egregious uh, acts of war against humanity. They have commoditized everything. They have controlled the inflation rate through the International Monetary Fund by controlling the scarcity of all known currencies. And they are causing and creating the, the food sto- shortages, which aren't shortages. We have enough food to feed everybody. But when they are commoditized and subsidized by the federal government, then that's what makes people go hungry. And everybody needs to stand up now and start feeding their neighbors, start feeding their brothers and sisters, and jump jump to task. Don't. Don't rely on the Senate or House of Representatives because they are the ones that forced homelessness, forced hunger, forced uh, death by the elements, and they've always done this exactly like it is it was in Nazi Germany. This is underneath the corporate structure, and everybody needs to realize these things so that we can compensate and fix them. Yeah, a, a thing I, I'd said uh, a few months back as well, I think, I was having an interview with uh, oh Rob Halford, uh, Mad Rob, a uh, very good friend of mine from Down Under, I don't know if he's listening, uh, how you doing Rob if you are, uh, I was uh, saying to Rob at that point in time a few months back um, that we find uh, that there's more and more co- uh, coalition of governments 
actually be informed at this point in time. I'm aware Australia, Canada, and of course uh, uh, last night today, uh, Austria as well. They're, they're all forming these coalition, and of course we've got it uh, here in the uh, the UK, certainly in the, the English Parliament. Um, we've got the coalition. What what is rapidly uh, happening is uh, the, the Western um, uh, elite powers is pulling their resources and they're wiping out these uh, uh, in inverted commas uh, question mark as well regimes in the Middle East, as in Syria, etc. Um, uh, they're pulling out those regimes, but they're setting up our own regimes here in our own lands, you know, because it's all coalition. And if we get to the point of it's a three-party or a four-party coalition, then you've no longer, uh, if you've had it before, you've not got a democracy at that point. Uh, but certainly uh, at that point in time, I don't know if you would agree, Tammy, uh, that you, you, you're under a dictatorship at that point in time when you've got an all-party uh, coalition, which is the way I see it going. Absolutely. There is no bipartisanship. The coalitions that you're refer referring to is actually the Confederacy. And let me go back to the 1924 uh, League of Nations Covenant. Okay, The annex to that covenant was the Articles of Confederacy back in 1777. Okay, When you go to the etymology on League, that the synonym to League is Confederacy. Okay, so they already have global governance since 1941 with the Atlantic Charter. And I'd like to define the word confederacy for people that do not realize how bad this is. Out of Black's Law Dictionary, their law dictionary, first edition, the definition of confederacy is confederacy. In criminal law, the association or banding together of two or more persons for the purpose of committing an act or furthering an enterprise which is forbidden by law, or which, though lawful in itself, becomes unlawful when made the object of the confederacy. Now listen to this very carefully. Conspiracy is a more technical term for this offense. The act of two or more who combine together to do any damage or injury to another or to do any unlawful act. Now, the very last line of that says, see federal government. When you're hearing about the League of Nations, the United Nations, the um, any amount of code in your countries, wherever you are, or the appearance or the illusion of these countries, that is the confederacy. And this is so profound because here we are, and we are walking through revelation. Revelation means to reveal or evidence. And what we are evidencing is the criminal enterprise known as Congress. That word congress means with transgression. That is the transgressor that you were warned about in the Bible. That is the thing that's tricking you out. It is acting as your pimp at any, any given moment in time. Now, the word injury means, of course, to bring into law. And when we were talking before the show, you had asked me to go into the birth record and birth certificate. So I'm going to start doing that now. What happens is when a child is brought into this world... They travel down the birth canal, okay? This is in the water of mom's womb. Yeah. Mom has been held in shadow under action of law, confederacy, since the coronation charter, which is actually the crucifixion of Jesus. The word Jesus in Latin and Greek means G-E space S-U-I-S, your earth. Okay, so that baby travels down that birth canal inside of the water that's owned by the Confederacy. And then after it leaves the birth canal, it is bir birthed. That means B-E-R-T-H, birth, to dock something. And what they're doing is they're invoking a bottom rebond at that moment. The birth record itself is sealed with a state seal at the foot of the document. That is documentation. That is putting that child, the vessel, into another state of being. It's being called something else. When it's born, it's born alive. They use the word born alive. 
but that word actually means dead. A plus L-I-V-E means away from life in Latin. Now, the definition of bottomry out of Black's Law First Edition is, in maritime law, a contract in the nature of a mortgage. Now, that word mortgage means dead pledge, by which the owner of a ship borrows money for the use, equipment, or repair of the vessel. Now, the minute you are born, thrown, V-O-U-R-N-E, you're thrown from the birth canal onto this new land, which they're calling theirs. They're claiming that you are injured. You're born. That goes through the International Classification of Diseases and Disorders. You are at that time, because you're born, you're being stated to be injured and brought into law. So they're borrowing money on that vessel for its repair. They're saying that you're injured at the birth. Now, you can be injured just as a normal birth, uh, forcep delivery, C-section, whatever else. That's all forms of injury. And so they're cashing in on the back end of that through the insurance schematic. And I'll go in. And I'll go in. Okay, so I'll go back to bottomry. A contract in the nature of a mortgage by which the owner of a ship borrows money for the use equipment or repair of the vessel and for a definite term that's insurance and pledges the ship or the keel or bottom of the ship pars pro total in in its total as a security for its repayment with maritime or extraordinary interest on account of the marine risks to be borne by the lender that's you and what you're doing is you're paying all that back by the action of debenture, which is a debt secured by your own earning power, your productivity. And they tell you this by labeling that GDP, gross domestic product. Okay? Um, it, it being stipulated that if the ship be lost in the course of the specified voyage or during the limited time by any of the perils enumerated in the contract, the lender shall also lose his money. So they're saying that you are responsible for any and all loss. And that's where the action of usufruct comes in. Use means the female, of course. Fruct means fruit. Okay, so fruit of the use is a baby. Fruit of the use is anything that you have in derivatives that you're creating out of your energy. And when they're doing all of these loans, it, it starts again later. You know, if you're, if you're invited by uh, conjuring you into court, Conjure means with law. They do that by summon ability. So they're summoning you. If you answer that summon, you're saying you're dead because only the dead can answer the summon. And again, if you take out a mortgage on a piece of property, that is a dead pledge. You're saying you're dead. And instead of the presumption of death now, you're overcoming that presumption and saying, here I am, I'm dead. Yep, yep, I'm dead. Because you're subscribing that means underwriting to the government, to the other father. So you're, you're allowing it to take your body and use it in any way they see fit. Now, the only rule of usufruct is that its capacity never diminishes, your earning capacity. And what that means is there's three forms of production on this planet. There's taxation and consumption is one-third of the global GDP, gross domestic product. Gross means overall, domestic means of the home and product. Of course, you know what that means. That's you. Okay? So one-third of the global GDP, gross domestic product, is in taxation and consumption. Consumption is you buying everything that you buy. And the, and the most uh, prolific use is, of course, oil and oil byproducts. It's not just the oil that you're putting in your car. Everything is wrapped in plastic. Children's toys are plastic. Bottles are plastic. Everything, siding on the house is plastic. Your cars now are made of plastic. You are the consumer consuming that and allowing this to fester and go further and further and further. So on the back end of your productivity is not gold like people think or silver or anything else. On the back end of productivity is actually the petrodollar that you're keeping in play by buying into all these things. And you keep it going because you're so reliant on oil 
and oil byproducts. On the other end of oil and oil byproducts is gold, silver, platinum, you know, all of the precious metals, copper, iron, whatever else. And so you're guaranteeing by underwriting all of this. You're buying into it, subscribing, and you need to stop buying into it. You need to get off the grid, stop doing this. You do not need things in packaging. You do not need the human ease. You know, it's you can go out into your grass, even if you live on a small portion of land. They have commoditized everything on this planet. Now, rice is a grass seed. Bottom line, rice is a grass seed. Wheat, oats, those are all grass seeds. And they've codified it and taught you that you you have no idea how easy it is to get off the grid. They have taught you that you need to rely on this thing because they've commoditized everything. Everybody's addicted to sugar. Sugar is an addicted sub- substance. You don't need that. You don't need that. Protein breaks down into carbs and and every variant of sugar through the Krebs cycle itself. You need protein. You need some carbs, you know, but they're so easy to find just right in your backyard. And it, it you, you got to start studying these things. And that's, that's the majority of our classes. We teach people how to get off the grid. That's the majority of our shows. We, we teach people how to get off the grid, how to preserve things, how to can how to live without this government influence. Well, absolutely. Uh, and that's a good uh, opportunity, actually, there is just to throw in to the listeners. Um, uh, we've got Royston Upson uh, on a Tuesday uh, from 7 till 8 uh, p.m. GMT. Uh, uh, and I think uh, it'd be good if you, you guys could tune in and listen to the information that Royston has got. He's, a, he, he's what you would class as a survival uh, expert, um, for want of a better word, he maybe not like to be called an expert, but he certainly is. He can certainly give you uh, some good tips and information. Well, Tammy, the you know the whole construct um, has been designed for this big illusion um, that we're now all starting to wake up. Uh, how do we uh, how do we crack forward at a greater pace to start waking people up? It's already happening because there is, I believe, an energy shift. There is an energy pull uh, uh, going in a direction or another, um, uh, and people are starting to wake up. People are starting to ask questions. Uh, we just need uh, more people starting to wake up passively. Is the thing though uh, passively is what we need to do. Absolutely. And the number one thing is to drop all these titles. Stop striving to be. You already are. And the way that they take you is by nomenclature. They're the ones that named you. They're the ones that hold the patent on the on the land patent, which is you, the human being. Real estate is you, the human being. And the reason that they do that is because you're constantly being described as to what you are. Describe means of writing. Instead of just being, everybody's being written about or prescribed, written before you are. Prescription medications, Mm -hmm. prescriptive programming, Mm -hmm. television programming. All of these things are teaching you what to be rather than allowing you to be what you are. You need to open your eyes and get away from all of this television programming, uh, broadcasting. Broadcasting Board of Governors has global control of all known media except for the alternatives such as us. We're not corporate funded. We're not um, government funded. We're not federally funded. We're not anything associated or affiliated with the Confederacy, and which is, a, again, that's a criminal enterprise. Now, once you get past that aspect, then delve into what is the Central Intelligence Agency. That thing is only a production company. And you can read about this um, over on my YouTube, Tammy K32. I read through the, um, uh, oh, goodness, uh, just give me one second and I'll get the name up. Um, it's book four of the church reports, uh, church committee reports. Uh, what it is is the production company it goes through and tells us exactly what the CIA is, what it is used for how it's been used throughout time, and and they have been responsible through the action of Congress. Now, remember, the Congress created through the National Security Act in 1947, the National Security Council, and just below that 
is the um, uh, CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency. It is nothing but a production company. Mm -hmm. And when you go back into our history, you find out that it's done so many productions. It produced Vietnam. It produced Korea. It produced Japan. It produced, right now, Syria. The civil war that everybody's heard about in Syria. There's no civil war. That was Hezbollah on the ground. Hezbollah is the CIA. Um, uh, Bin Laden was the CIA. Uh, Al-Qaeda is the CIA. These are all intelligence productions promoted to you as forms of propaganda. Mm -hmm. This is only government propaganda, and they're what it's called, and I know that a lot of people, I'm going to tick you off right now, but that is called artificial intelligence. You are being presented with another intelligence, which is artificial, and you're being filled up with these things so that you allow the death of your brothers and sisters. You allow the wars to occur. You allow the separation between you and your brother, you and your brother based on color, religious construct, um, uh, political construct, language. People are are patriotic to their language, calling it their father. People are uh, patriotic to their culture. Culture is a design. Culture is a design. It's not a natural state at all. Um, The book four that I've been reading is called The Supplementary Detailed Staff Reports on Foreign and Military Intelligence. Now, I've been reading that, and you can find that over on my YouTube, Tammy K32, and uh, first, uh, there's part one, part two. Yes, it's it's a lot of of um, information, and it takes a while to get through. But I urge everybody, especially in other places, to go through that to see what happened. You know, the the Kennedy assassination is actually in there. Uh, his own brother was against him. As it no, uh, just recently came out, Tommy, that the one of the uh, the bodyguards of Kennedy uh, has now admitted to accidentally shooting him. Yes, and that wasn't accidental. Well, um, I, I, you can I, find that in the church committee reports. Yep. Um, Kennedy, and, and he knew what was going on. He was The president is always the head of the CIA. That's where the intelligence productions are going to, to the mouthpiece. Now, when you go back to the word administrator and clerk, clerk which is what a president is, that's the one speaking the word on behalf of all of this intelligence productivity. That thing is is just a mouthpiece. The president is a mouthpiece for national policy. Absolutely. It's and, just part and of that, the, part national of the policy is the depopulation plan. And you could read about that through the National Security Council and the um, uh, Memorandum 200 of Henry Kissinger himself when he was suggesting that depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign and military intelligence, the highest priority. Because when we get to a certain amount of people, we end up what? And and this is the same thing back in the Bible, the biblical construct. When you go all the way back then, they were also removing the firstborn son. Well, why do they do that? Because that firstborn son, that child of God, is going to usurp Congress. He's going to come in pissed off that everybody's been human trafficked. His children are being human trafficked and abused, raped, molested by legislators, judges, psychologists, experts, attorneys. And and it won't be tolerated anymore. And so before that happens, before any enlightenment happens, they've always called the human populace in order to cut the risk to them of us standing up against them and taking them out. Because if you realize, if you realize right now today what the government structure is actually doing to you, you would immediately self-defend and take it out. And they've never wanted that, and that's why they require the intelligence productions. Yeah, all the world's a stage, as they say, Tommy. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, these guys that are the head of the corporations, that's basically what they are. You know, Obama, uh, Cameron, uh, we've got uh, the sidekick up here in Scotland, uh, Smokey Salmon, I call him. 
you know, and again, even we've got the independence thing coming up again, uh, or not again, uh, next year, uh, 2014. And what Alex Salmond is trying to sell the Scots people uh, is he's trying to sell them three things. He's trying to sell the Scots people uh, regardless, um, uh, or, or you know, whether you're a Catholic, a Protestant, black, white, Hindu, Jew, whatever, he, the man Alex Salmond is trying to sell the people of Scotland um, a monarchy which has not been elected in Scotland, and that's why they were going round in the 60s burning uh, the post boxes and all these things. They are two of them, uh, various things that the Scots did at that time. Um, now, if we retain that monarchy, then it's, nothing has changed in that department. That's what uh, Samad is trying to th put across to the Scots. Uh, he also wants to uh, retain the services of the Crown Construct. The Crown Construct is, is what the, the law system and the whole construct in general what we live under, what, what, what we're uh, forced to live in. Um, and they want to retain uh, the sterling currency. And if we retain the sterling currency, that ties us back to the 1707 Treaty of Union with the uh, Bank of England, uh, and ergo makes us responsible for a percentage of taxes. Um, so what is being played here in Scotland, as far as the corporation leader is concerned, is he's selling a, a curveball, as far as I'm concerned, um, to the Scots, uh, whereby... Um, similar to what happened in England, uh, the English uh, or, or the people in the land known as England uh, uh, allegedly gave up uh, their sovereignty and the uh, to the Queen, and the Queen retained the sovereignty of the people, uh, who then she relinquished the sovereignty uh, to the Parliament, and you now have parliamentary sovereignty uh, in England, um, and I fear. That this is what the 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 backbone of uh, uh, Alex Salmon's construct is going to be, and I think that when people uh, wake up after having voted yes, and they probably will for independence, albeit they were already independent, check it out with the National Archives of Scotland guys. Uh, they already deem they were independent. Declaration of our broth also su suggests the same, and uh, one or two other documents. Um, and it's another curveball, Tammy, that's been placed Well, upon. and not just that, because when the Queen actually gave up her seat long ago with the Magna Charta, Magna Carta. Yeah. Now, when when that happened, it wasn't the UK legislature that got it. It, was, it went into Congress. It was the American Congress, which the United States of America is a style. It's not even a landmass. It's called a style for a reason. It means a chain of events or actions of Congress. All it is is a criminal enterprise. But in 1941, Churchill, Winston Churchill and Roosevelt, the, the clergy member, president guy, they signed off on all known kings, monarchies, whatever else, on behalf of the crown and on behalf of the, quote, United States of America to give Congress global governance in 1941 with the Atlantic Charter. Now, following that Atlantic Charter is the most horrifying, and that was the master land lease agreement that Churchill and Roosevelt entered into. That is Malthusian theory or the nature of rent. So that allows you, the human being, to be tricked out as a prostitute on behalf of pimps. Now, your pimps are these courts. They're called banks. The, the, the courts were never anything but banks. Uh, the, the bankers, J.P. Morgan, was a law firm. They're all banks. And what you're looking at is, uh, like, if you go into the bank building, you're looking at a representation of the court. When you go into a court setting, you walk into that bank, you are a special deposit to be negotiated. The clerk is the unit of exchange. So at that window, you go into court as a special deposit. The court process is actually called, in Black's Law Dictionary, negotiorum gestio. That means you are being negotiated as a negotiable instrument. Now, the attorney is called the negotiorum gestor. All he does is trick you out with the judge, which is the bank. That attorney is a banker. So you are a major of money, the Federal Reserve note, 
And you're being tricked out by court process, by legal process. And everybody needs to wrap their mind around that because as soon as they realize that, then, of course, a revelation occurs. You know, once the Lamb's able to open that book, codex means book. Code is words written in a book. Statute means statement of compulsion. That thing is pulling you around. Once the Lamb is able to open that book finally, what happens? His wrath is made known. So why do you think they perverted your word? They're scared shitless of you waking up. They're scared to death because they know they're going to be held accountable. And they are right now. In our court case, when we went into the United States District Court, we couldn't find a judge. We put evidence on the court record. We never stepped foot in there as, it, as the um, special deposit to be negotiated. We stood outside of court. We said, okay, this this thing is overruled. You're, you're outside of your judicial canons because you're supposed to be bound as a judge. You're not supposed to be an attorney in a black dress. So we went on a journey to look for judges. We didn't find any. Well, the rule under the 1666 Sester K. Act says if you can't find somebody, they're lost at sea. Eventually, you ask them to appear, you ask them to come in, you ask them to show themselves and, and evidence their be living status. Nobody ever did that. So eventually, we had to declare them dead. And based on that, that goes to the clearinghouse, which is the Secretary of State, to offset congressional bankruptcy. So now there's another dead thing in the chute responsible for what Congress has been doing since the 1600s. Yeah. Now, they took us all over. They thought it was funny to contract with each other and trick us out like prostitutes. They thought it was funny to prey on our kids. They thought it was funny to rape, molest babies, our babies, in order to generate revenue. They thought it was funny to institutionalize human beings to generate revenue. They thought it was funny to charge everybody with, with uh, commercial crimes, which are crimes against the laws of revenue, by the way, pot use, narcotic use, everything else. They thought that was really funny when they were getting away with it. It's not funny anymore. When an attorney gets shot in both legs and charged with serial bank robbery, a judge's son just got charged for uh, stealing um, cocaine and selling it, upwards of $200,000 in California. Another judge is charged with uh, mailing uh, drugs back and forth through the mail. Um, uh, legislators are being charged not only here but in the U.K. The U.K. Uh, Labor Secretary just came out and said these courts are, are, are prostitution rings. In the mainstream media. What was it I caught a few months back? Um, I, I can't quite uh, recall the exact name of the case. Um, it surrounds uh, a, an older guy. Uh, he had shot a young black fella, a young black lad. I think the, the, the young fella was only maybe 17, 18, 19 years of age or so. Uh, and he used, uh, it was, you know, the care in the community and it was a community thing that he'd done and we didn't know if he was going to shoot me and uh, did it not turn out that his uh, his father was actually a judge, a retired judge, as I recall? Right, and the funniest thing has recently occurred. That was the Zimmerman trial. That's the one. Now, they were using that. Congress and the CIA was using that to promote racial tension. Well, what happened was at that time, Zimmerman was let off. He was specialized by his handlers... And what's happened now is his wife just filed for divorce. She said he was nuts. Um, he's being redistributed in the courts. And he's being, all of that money that he, wa that he won and he became a little bit famous, you know, whatever money he took in off of that, his pay, his pay that he got, it's all being taken now through the court process. Mm -hmm. His attorneys are getting a cut. His wife's attorneys are getting a cut because she's the one filing for divorce. But he's been fully assigned as the dead thing. So, And, and that's a, a lesson for any of these agents. We run into agents every day that are working on behalf of the FBI and the CIA that are trying to put um, a stopping point in what we're doing. I get censored on the air. I get cut off um, on the air a lot. Uh, they, they hack the station a lot. Um, that's espionage, by the way, 18 U.S.C. Uh, subsection 794. But the thing is, is that all of these actions that they're perpetrating, Mesowitz, the CIA operations director two weeks ago, was charged for doing his job. Okay, so they cut him off at the knees. 
uh, last week, the retired assistant director for the FBI, he was taken out, and they're redistributing his retirement at this time. Every day we're watching agents being charged with criminal activity, and what this means is they are now the target of policy. They are now the target. So if you work on behalf of the government, if you work on behalf of the CIA and FBI and everything else, your time is now to be held accountable for what you've been doing. Yes, you've been a useful idiot on on behalf of policy. That's great. Do your job. Because eventually you are going to be redistributed, and that is occurring right now. Right now. And and that's something that, that is so profound to me because I never thought that, you know, working all of these years, and I've been doing this for the last 13 years, I really thought that the awakening would never happen in my lifetime, but it's happening now. Yeah, and they are yeah. cannibalizing each other right now. Yeah. I also some, uh, saw something in the news last night, uh, Tammy, you may be more aware of it. It was something to do with the American economy and today particularly. Uh, whether they were going to let the economy crash or fall or something, I think they said. Absolutely, and that's fear-mongering. What they want is they've been threatening to shut down the government and everything else, but they're, they're fear-mongering the sheeple that rely on that government. They're so used to those handouts, welfare benefits, Social Security benefits and everything else, they're, they're crying right now, and the government knows it. That is called the action of criminal coercion. They're threatening, if you don't do this, I'm going to do this. That's criminal coercion. That's blackmail. Yeah. And it cannot be tolerated. And and like they say, okay, threaten me that you're going to shut down. Shut down already. Stop threatening me. Get the hell out of my country. Get the hell away from my children because you're the harm. Congress is the one that's tricking everybody out across the globe. Yeah, well, it's the same all over the globe. It's the same all over the globe. And this is what people's waking up to, Tammy. You know, we just need it to be happening just that wee bit sharper. Uh, or are we seeing the beginning of the breakdown? Because, you know, uh, we're, we're looking at Barclays Bank, as I said earlier. They're cutting off money supplies to here, there and everywhere. Um, we've had, uh, you know, they've always got to operate, as we know, with this uh, uh, clean hands doctrine. You know, they've got to operate with that clean hands doctrine. It eases their conscience somewhat, I believe. Um, now, what they're doing uh, uh, systematically, as we know, is they're, they're going around all the different uh, regimes in the world. They're, they're taking them out. They're forming coalition governments, as we've suggested. Uh, they're, they're forming uh, one party allegiances uh, and that is based upon the the new world agenda to get us all uh, dumped down uh, to the point of we don't have any choice, we don't have any say, you can't uh, look left or look right without permission. Um, and I've completely missed the thread of what I was going to say there, I should have just got straight to the point. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, um, when it boils down to it, uh, with all these banks starting to show signs of, uh, you know, restrictions or collapse, or governments showing signs of collapse, it's getting near the edge of the tipping point, I would say. Um, and the people, well, kind of, um, and the people need with, to be, with, be aware and with, be prepared for that. Right, and but with the. With the presentation that you're seeing, you have to realize that, that the attorney, the banker, the judges, and the other fictions, agents especially, have all been declared dead. So they are the thing that backs the Federal Reserve notes. Any known currency, those dead things that have been declared dead are the thing that's backing those notes. So we're not looking at a failure. There's threatened failure because they don't want them knowing what's going on. I mean, you can't tell everybody that, hey, hey, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm corrupt, I'm a criminal enterprise, so I'm going to fix this. They have to still continue the show in order to take each other. because that, And, that, and that's exactly what's written in Revelation. Uh, they're to be killed as they killed the lamb. That doesn't mean that they're, they're to be shot in the head. They are to be killed as they killed the lamb by document. Mm -hmm. They were declared dead. Now they've been killed. And now they are the thing that backs the monetary, uh, whatever currency uh, every country is is uh, trading on. Now in the UK news, um, what's been the most amazing is that uh, in, in uh, Britain and, and the UK, 
the mainstream media, especially the Daily Mail uh, right now, has been telling the sheeple what's going on. Now, in a recent report on the, um, um, oh, goodness, where did it go? Um, they were going after the councils for, for human trafficking. Um, they're going after the, um, the Department of Education over there. Um, uh, let's see, Oxford County Council loses one in seven children in its care. Well, they did the same thing here in Oklahoma. They're, they're showing people, look, you really don't want child protection services. You really don't want SS because those things are the things that are preying on you. And they're showing the sheep what's going on. It's not only breaking down, it's actually enabling them to cannibalize each other. Mm-hmm. And that's what the sheep are being presented with now. They're, they're saying, hey, look, the corporate counsel is the one preying on you. The judges are the ones preying on you. Um, the attorneys are the ones preying on you. And it's not just us saying this. This is now being reported in the mainstream media. On ABC um, in Illinois, a state representative came in, a congress member came in and said, hey, oh, maybe cops are killing some of these kids. And I was like, I was blown out of my mind. I mean, like, holy crap, because that is corporate policy. That is what Congress has been directing since 1947 with the National Security Act. The corporate council is the one that's directing these cops to kill people. Mm-hmm. And now here's Congress saying, well, blame the cops. Well, no, 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 no. We're not going to blame the cops. They're acting on the directives of you, the Congress member. They're acting on the directives of the Board of Governors. They're acting on the directives of corporate council. And I learned this last year when they sicked a detective on me. So this detective, he's ex- he's expecting somebody else. You know, they, they're they always sending out the FBI and everything else to stop us. And this detective meets me, and he starts talking about all that bull crap sovereign citizen movement. And I said, there's no such thing as a sovereign citizen. A citizen is always subject to the Constitution and laws thereof. And I showed him this in Black's Law Dictionary. Well, five hours later... You know, of course, he's my friend, and he realizes that I'm not a threat to anybody. It's his own boss that's a threat. It's his own government that he's patronizing that's a threat. I I don't want to harm any human. I could care less what happens to the attorneys. And and that's another thing that people need to realize. These cops, when when a cop goes to um, school to be a cop, and then it it gets placement in these uh, facilities and placements, They're required to have an IQ that's just above mentally retarded at 100 or 110. They cannot have an IQ higher than that. Really? They're required to be so that the corporate counsel can puppet them. And that's what I learned firsthand when I was talking to that detective. He says, Tammy, when I go out and I'm I'm, I'm investigating a, a felony, before I charge somebody for a felony, I have to call corporate counsel. So they're maintaining the quotas, and corporate counsel tells him whether or not he can charge somebody for a felony. Uh, you know, um, the, the IQ thing kind of sparked me a wee bit there. Uh, yeah, don't don't blame the cops. You know, and well, it, it's the same thing it... with our our brothers and sisters who are in the military. When they go through boot camp, they're broken down to the emotional maturity of a nine year old, so that they can be. Um, railroaded through whatever they need them to do to use them as puppets. Yeah, just and everybody needs it? to. We need to wrap our arms around these people because the FBI right now is targeting the cops for death, and they're targeting the citizens for death by cop. When we need to wrap our arms around each other and say, "Hey, look, no, you went into this job thinking that you were protecting humanity, and you've been perverted." You have been told and puppeted by corporate counsel to kill me, and I've been told that you're my enemy, so therefore I want to kill you. But that's not the fact. That's, that is not the evidence course of things. This is corporate counsel. We want to focus on the attorneys that are puppeting everybody. And you can go back into the United States history to the last Civil War and look at the same thing. You know, Congress came in and said, well, slavery is legal. We like slavery. And then they pointed the finger at all of the people. And they said, well, you like slavery. We never liked slavery. We never agreed to all that shit. 
But it was Congress pitting us against each other, calling us racist, telling us we hated each other, and ended up, what, what happened? Everybody killed each other on the behalf of Congress. Well, we were all puppets. That's the whole deal. I mean, <laughs> divide and conquer. You know. Absolutely. Uh, hi. Let, let, the, let the, the, the people divide themselves, and then we'll get and divide what's left. Absolutely, and not just that, we, we kill each other or allow the slaughter of each other, such as what's been happening on Iraq and Iran, Afghanistan, Syria now. You know, Saddam Hussein didn't, didn't do all those things, the CIA did. The CIA is the Al-Qaeda, which means base. Yeah, that's right. It's never been anything right. but, and, and they're killing us and then pointing the finger at us and saying, well, you did it. And this goes all the way back to Exodus in the Bible. Exodus means away from God, outside of God, exodus. And, and here this judge, Moses was a judge. He's the one that came down from a hill and said, well, you guys are all killing each other and stealing each other's wives and asses. I'll protect you. Leviticus, the action of taxation. Levy means to tax. And that's all it's ever been. That's their manifest, is the Old Testament. Then you can walk, watch the walk of Jesus and find out how to get out of this. Because Jesus said, you know what, you guys, you don't even know the scripture of God. Scripture is the actual walk. Description is the writing of it. Prescription, inscription, subscription, underwriting, superscription, writing above us. You know, it's it's all been the action of Babylonian theory, teaching us language, then culture, and patriotism, calling something your father in exchange for protection, which goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And that's what Eve did. She went off to the human east. They said, hey, look, we got chicken over here wrapped up in plastic, and it looks nice and everything else. And she went that way. We got to come back the other way and stand and take the garden back. Because they never had any land. They never had any property. It belongs to humanity. It, it does to not belong to the psychopath. Absolutely. Um, we had a wee discussion about this today. Uh, and I've, I've mentioned it many times, uh, Tammy. I don't know whether you agree or whether you don't agree with my, uh, my, my uh, construct of what I'm about to say. You know, whose fault is it? Somebody asked me, whose fault is it? Well, it's our fault. It's our fault. And well, and that's what Jesus was saying about yeah. forgiveness. Once you realize you have to forgive yourself, not them. They're the things that's been raping you. He said for all those that harm children, be it better that they have the millstone and they be tossed into the sea of commerce. But he did maintain that you have to forgive yourself. You have to realize, don't hold it against yourself for being ignorant. I mean, in our natural state, we are so naive. We don't have a predator. We don't have to worry about anything preying on us. And now here comes the attorney, Satan. That's our adversary. That's how Satan ever meant his adversary. To attorney means to go off to another Lord God and patronize it. Mm -hmm. that, that thing, the attorney has a different God that it believes in. That God is Marduk under the action of Baal. That's what human trafficking is, is Baalism. So you have to realize who your adversary is. You have to realize who Satan is and what's tricking you out and what's doing this. And yes, we were very ignorant. We don't have a natural predator. We're allowed and, to be in a, innocent. And the, the Baal thing again takes us back into the, the whole religion side of things. Read the, uh, the fish hat pope things that the, uh, uh, the cardinals, etc. pope wears. Absolutely, and, that, and that's another thing about the Pope. Those were their original banks. Well, Before, you know, you had the, the Court of a Hundreds. That Pope means father. You're patronizing something and calling it your dad. Jesus said, don't do that. Don't call it your father. He said, patronize yourself. Don't you know that you're the judge? 1 Corinthians 6. He said, I'm so filled with shame because you're not realizing you're the judge. And then he reiterated again in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 13. He said, this is the third time I'm coming to talk to you. Don't you know yourself? Don't you realize who you are? Mm -hmm. Just a point I'd like to clarify uh, for Jock on this, the, the Scots box. 
Um, Chalk, when I'm saying uh, it's our fault, I mean collectively, globally. Whether you did or whether you didn't, the collective did. The, the collective consented for everything that's happening. As a humanity, as a collective, it's humanity's fault where the planet is at right now. That's my belief. That's my uh, because if if more people was in the majority where they didn't agree, then we wouldn't be here. It's kind of uh, uh, black and white for me. Like, um, Tammy, uh, look, the word is out. People are, are you know, it's, it, we've even got comedians over here. I don't know if you've ever heard of a guy called Frankie Boyle. Right, the Frankie Boyle's a, a, a kind of semi-famous Scottish comedian. Funny guy. He took me a while to catch on to his humour. Uh, and every time I was looking at the guy, I was saying, you know, he knows more than he's letting on. And uh, he started coming away now in different uh, various uh, media clips on uh, various locations, uh, suggesting uh, what I just said there, that he's, he's, uh, his eyes are open wider. And there's more and more and more people, you know, in various uh, positions in life, if you like, are starting to come out now. And I think it's more, uh, merely now a, a case of uh, starting to connect the dots now, you know, the, the people start to connect the dots. Uh, get away from this uh, celebrityism uh, and get back to humanity, you know. Get away from what the media says on the TV, what, what you should dress, what you should wear, what you should eat, what you should look like. You should be a size zero if you're a female. You should use this product if you're a guy. Uh, you should watch this program. You should be uh, your your attention captivated by that uh, uh, sport, um, this particular thing, that particular thing. Everything is a means of captivation to keep uh, the people's eyes away from the truth of humanity. And the truth of humanity is just coming together as one and realising, accepting, appreciating and uh, uh, realising that everybody is sovereign just the same as what you are. Everybody has the same equality and, and we're all just human beings. As far as people that's in the positions of uh, uh, alleged uh, authority, um, do we forgive them? We have to forgive them. We have to give the, the give them the opportunity to be forgiven if they so wish. What would you say to that? Well, absolutely not. And that's what we evidenced in this case against them. We came in and we said, hey, do you know that you're human trafficking? And they said, well, I don't give a shit. So then we went to the next one and we said, hey, do you know that you're human trafficking? And they said, we don't give a shit. We make a lot of money. And so we went to the next one. We said, hey, do you know that you're human trafficking? We did this all the way through this case, months and months and months and months of this case. And we went all the way up to Senate members, House of Representatives, judges, attorneys, bankers, banks. And we kept asking the same question. Do you know what you're doing? And every one of them decided to continue doing what they were doing and evidence their crimes against me, injuring me. And there is no mercy for that. That's how we won the case. They actually evidenced their crimes on court record in real time. And, and that's what Jesus said they would do. They said, you can't claim that, well, what if, you know, if I was back in the day of my father, I would have fixed this. And Jesus said, no, that shit's not going to fly with me. And I'm saying the same thing. That shit's not going to fly with me. You chose to take that bag of silver over me, a human being, so you're done. I found out that you weren't my brother, and you are only a heathen and a publican. Therefore, you are responsible to wear that millstone around your neck, and you will be tossed into the sea of commerce. Mm -hmm. And that's what it meant. You're lost at sea. You have been declared dead. Now, you had the opportunity to back out and repent, Repent means to turn the other way, not do it again. And instead, you kept right on going. And there is no forgiveness there. There is no mercy there. Because with intent now, I, I evidence their intent. With intent, they kept doing the same thing over and over again. Guys, if you've got any questions for uh, Tammy, now would be a good time to uh, throw them into the chat box. Alternatively, if you want to uh, call in, just send me a PM and I can pull you in. Uh, if you've got uh, Skype, um, Scottish Sovereign is the Skype name. Um, there was a question came in for you, Tammy, uh, and I think it was in relation to uh, Judge David Wynne Miller. 
uh, to see if you agreed with uh, what Judge David Wynne Miller was thinking about uh, uh, the document, the contract, Postal Vessel Corporation Court thing. Absolutely not. What he's doing is the same thing that others are doing, uh, like the OPP attorneys. They're uh, attempting to get you to contract again with the state. And ecclesiastical law asks one question. Do you know thyself? 1 Corinthians 6, 1 Corinthians 13, 2 Corinthians 13. Do you know the self? You are not to be patronizing another. And 1 Corinthians 6 specifies that. You are to be the only judge. You don't contract and say, help me, help me, help me, help me. I'm a citizen. I'm under you. I'm an individual. I'm under you. Yeah. I'm an American. I'm under you. Whatever else. You don't do that. You you stop asking the wolf to guard the hen house, and you, and you take up your authority. You become that author of your book. That is the book of life, is your walk. That's the book of life. You're the author. It's not a book that's written by attorney and cohort, cohort or co-conspirator. That's your book that you're writing as you go along, and you are required to hold them accountable. That is what the resurrection is. It's not a reincarnation. It never said that Jesus was coming back from the dead. It said Jesus was going to be able to stand again, resurrected. That's you. The apocalypse comes from the word apo and collecting, uh, meaning to bring forth from a hidden state. Yeah. It doesn't mean that there's going to be a bunch of zombies eating you. Yeah, well, see that again. That's been uh, the use of words through the centuries, Tommy. Uh, they've been bastardized. Um, we're aware that you know the apocalypse word is actually uh, Greek for uh, as well, it's, it's again it's uh, for an unveiling. Yes, to bring forth from a hidden state, and yeah. that's all it is. Yeah. It's been so perverted, and you've been taught, especially Americans, uh, Westernized culture has been taught that English is English. English is a strung together compilation of Greek and Latin. That's all it is. And and it has been extremely perverted um, here in this, quote, country or whatever. Uh, for example, you can see um, your appropriations committee. Well, people think that's a nice thing. It's appropriate. That means a good thing. No. To appropriate means to take. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's taking you and tricking you out. Then you have the county assessor. Well, what's it assessing? Your value as real estate, as a human being. And so that's what you have to strive for. That's what you have to work 40 hours a week or 80 hours a week for, is to meet that assessed amount. Then on the back end of that, they've got uh, municipal hedge funds betting against that productivity. They're betting against that productivity. And all the way at the end of the, of the stage, you've got death derivatives now. They are betting on your death. Well, who ensures your death? Well, let's go into some words here that are very, very horrifying. Poly means many. Side, C-I-D-E, means to kill. Policy is the action of killing many. Police, P-O-L-I-C-E, is the actor killing many. From directives of the Board of Commissioners, Commission means to commission something. Pay them to do it. That's who takes you. Board of commissioners. Board of corporate counsel. When you go back into the biblical aspects, um, you remember the old ecumenical council. The chief priests and elders. That means general counsel today. That's a synonym for general. Well, who sits on the general counsel? Rick Perry. Well, what else does he sit on? The Department of Health and Human Services. Go back to the foundation of that one. That's the Office of Population Affairs. Well, where does that come from? Henry Kissinger brought that one into play in 1975 following his, his memorandum 200 to the National Security Council that said depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. So those are the folks that are killing you as you go in and worship that thing. Over and over again, don't accept the benefits. Don't go in and apply for welfare. Go to your neighbor. We have to get back into humanity. 
It's a requirement. Otherwise, humanity is going to be wiped out. There are two species on this planet right now. There's a human and a psychopath. The psychopath does not have a frontal lobe. The human being is the evolved species. The psychopath is not evolved. It has no human emotion. It has no human compassion. It has no empathy whatsoever. It's an accountant. It counts human beings and cashes in on it. And that's what Jesus was maintaining over and over and over again. He practiced compassionate justice. He says, remove all harm from communities. Remove all harm before it can hurt you. The psychopath is preying on you. Prior to that, we didn't have a natural predator. And they're in charge. They're taking the yeah. controls. They're taking the reins. We're allowing them to take the reins. As I said, it's just a, you know, the power lies in the people, uh, Tammy. The, the power lies in the people. They've just got to get to that realisation that the power lies in them. Nothing can happen without them saying so. Absolutely. And they, and they act from the bottom line through fear. Okay, so... All of humanity has been taught to fear death. Okay? In 1974, Henry Kissinger put out the directives that you are to be killed. That's the highest priority of all foreign policy is depopulation. That means you, the human, is required to be killed in order to facilitate policy. So then they teach you the fear of death. So you're scared to death of dying when you're going to be killed anyway. So why are you still sitting down? Right now is the time that you need to self-defend. You need to stand up and hold them accountable for what they're doing. You need to open the eyes of fellow human beings. Because that's the requirement. that You cannot fear. Fear is a mind killer. And that has you sitting in your houses. and you, That is the action of narcissism, by the way. Somebody asked me that years ago. When I was attempted on, I, I would have never considered these words out of my mouth today until I was attempted on. Mm-hmm. Oh. And when that guy was looking at me and apologizing to me for my death, I realized something immediately. That first of all, I was about to die. And second of all, I was so narcissistic prior to that, thinking about dying. Thinking about dying. That was keeping me so in a box. And that's what Jesus said. You have shut up the kingdom of heaven. That's part of it. They have shut up my kingdom. Because before that, I was walking along and I was always scared of death. I was always scared to go forward. I was always scared to speak out. You know, and I'd, I'd, I'd pussyfoot around and I'd lightly tap on this subject or that subject. No, 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 no. No. Fear is a mind killer, and you have to stand up, and you have to stand up immediately because you're already scheduled for death. If you don't want that to occur, you're going to stand up on your fellow human beings' behalf. And that's something that's so profound and so important. I do not live for me. I live for you. Mm -hmm. And that's the way humanity's got to start addressing itself now, start approaching things. Do you know, it gets actually gets tiring, uh, Tammy, I don't know how you feel yourself. It gets tiring putting across the same message time after time after time after time. Uh, it gets difficult. It gets, um, you know, I've been doing these shows for uh, coming up in four years now, and and uh, I find sometimes a struggle to 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 even comprehend what I'm trying to say because it gets so mind-numbingly uh, frustrating. Um, when you try not so much the people on the you know on on uh, radio stations like these or chat boxes like the ones in the Scottish Sovereigns uh, in the land uh, site, um, but more so the the people that you deal with on an every day to day basis, uh, it gets more frustrating um, to try and regurgitate things all the time to try and dress it up differently to try and get them to understand it or comprehend it in a different fashion. Um, it's just a very difficult task that, that we face. But we are, uh, you, I, all the people that's listening, the folks that's on chat boxes, not only on the sites that we frequent, but all over the world, they are the the building blocks of the foundations of the new 
uh, positive change that's going to come for people. I believe. I believe that we're going to be okay, guys, is what I truly believe. I believe that humanity is going to finally give itself a shake and it's going to wake up and realise that they're not going to be taking this much more. I think that's going to happen. And I think that's going to happen quicker than we think. Absolutely, because once you realise who the predator is, it's a very, 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 very extremely small group of individuals. It's Congress, Senate, and the House of Representatives, and the Board of Governors behind them. It's very, very small. We outnumber them. You know, how many? The, the, the psychopathy, the psychopath around the globe is less than 3% of our entire population. 97% of us are not psychopaths. We have the force behind everything. And what you need to realize is just get rid of all of these statutes and all of these codes. Get your mind out of there. Stop subscribing. Stop, stop submitting yourself to this authority and stand above it and realize what it is. It's so small and all it is is a criminal enterprise. Hold it accountable for the criminal enterprise. Yeah, yeah. couldn't have said it better myself. You know, they have got to be held accountable and I think they will be held accountable. Uh, it's just a matter of time now. Uh, the cracks are starting to appear in the house of cards, if that is possible. Um, Tammy, uh, I'd like to thank you for coming on to uh, No Borders Radio tonight. I'm uh, kind of shattered. It's been a full day for myself. I don't know how you're feeling. Uh, but thanks very much for coming on. And uh, I invite the people uh, that's been listening tonight is to have a listen on a Saturday night to uh, some of Tammy's shows. Fascinating stuff. Um, you really should be getting tuned in there. Tammy, uh, as again, uh, as I say, thanks very much for coming on to No Borders Radio. And uh, until next time, well, that'll be just sooner than, than later, I would imagine. Uh, we'll get a wee chat again at some point. Thank you for having me on. I love you, brother. Be well. And you. Take care, Tammy. Good night. God bless. Guys, that was uh, uh, Tammy Pepperman. Uh, fascinating woman, lots of information there's absolutely no way uh, we could cover tonight what Tammy uh, uh, would could tell you um, all these uh, legality words is, uh, is the thing that she's into as well, She'll, she can uh, separate all this stuff for you